Father Simon and the Synod of Salvation. This comes from Alan, who also says, that's not my real name, by the way. He's still living in fear. Oh, that's a good as sign. As a result of this I like this already. Tale. I have asked that my confession be read under a pseudonym as it involves a delicate subject, my mother. Now, my mum, in a lot of ways, <laughs> is an amazing person. So you know that there's a little caveat coming. <laughs> in, in many ways... In spite of her advanced years, she still drives, sings in a choir, very involved in her church, does a lot of charity work and generally leaves people saying, I don't believe it when they find out how old she is. However, she does have her faults. It's a longer paragraph. <laughs> One is that she's totally self-obsessed. OK. It's quite hard well, hitting this. Every, every conversation has to focus on her. And if it drifts away onto other subjects, she'll shamelessly drag it back by saying something like, anyway, to return to what I was talking about. That's <laughs> good for her. I like this. <laughs> she'll say anything to keep herself at the centre of the stage. Old anecdotes we've all heard a dozen times. Tales about friends of her friends that we've never met and have no interest in. Thank you very much, you name it. It's all about her. Her, her. She could bore for England. <laughs> Ouch, Alan. <laughs> Loves her, really. You know, lots of work for charity. Say it like it is. But that's not all. She also seems to think that other people only exist for her benefit. She wasn't content until my brother and I married providing her with daughters-in-law, who she could then treat as the daughters she'd never had. Whilst proving the truth of the old joke, how many mothers-in-law does it take to change a light, light bulb? Only one. She just holds it in the air and expects the world to revolve around her. Mm. Different times, those jokes. Yes. Anyway, as for grandchildren, we couldn't produce them quickly enough for her so that she could get her quality grandmother time. For instance, she once babysat for my wife and I. And when I got back at the end of the evening, we asked if the children had been OK. Fine, she said. They were a little bit unsettled, so I read them a story. The children had a slightly different take on this. <laughs> when asked next morning what kind of a night they'd had, they said, Granny made us wake up so she could read us a story. Obviously, Granny was going to get her quality time in with her grandchildren, no matter what, yep. no, matter, no matter whether they were asleep or not. And last but not least, she's really demanding, particularly when it comes to meals. The rest of the family think it's just another way to remind everyone how important she is. But whatever the reason, everything has to be just the way she wants it. And it's because of this that I have to beg forgiveness. One day, mum came round for dinner, for which my wife had prepared a trifle for dessert. Now, my wife's trifles are something really special. And she puts a lot of effort into getting them just that way. However, when mum saw it, she said, Oh, that looks much too rich. <laughs> Could I just have some ice cream instead? I saw my w wife's mouth compress into a thin line. Uh, I'm not sure we've got any, I said. Well, could you have a look? <laughs> I gave in. As I headed for the kitchen, Mum added, And maybe a meringue nest? <laughs> and some... And some tinned fruit, if you've yes. got, just on top of the nest, would be good. Better a completely than, different dessert Better this, than this. This trifle. Well, I raided the freezer, not expecting to find any, but to my surprise, there at the bottom was a tub of toffee ice cream. Meringue nests and tinned fruit were found in the cupboards, and the requested dessert was served. Even this didn't seem to be quite enough for her, because once she'd finished, she claimed that the dessert was fine, but the ice cream tasted a bit funny. <laughs> anyway, sometime later, she got her coat and went home. After waving her goodbye at the door, Bye, Mum, miss you already. <laughs> I headed back for the kitchen, where my wife was quietly and understandably fuming. I can't believe she turned down the trifle for some ice cream, she said, and she even complained it tasted funny. How can toffee ice cream taste funny? I fetched the ice cream back from the freezer. Armed with two spoons, we tried it to see just how it did taste. Well, she's right, my wife said. It does taste funny. And realisation dawned. That's because it's not toffee ice cream, is it? I replied. Oh, no. No? Oh, no. No, it's roasted pumpkin puree. <laughs> <laughs> Precisely. You see, Father Sam, the previous Halloween, we'd made a pair of pumpkin lanterns. And after... <coughs> Hollowing them out, we'd roasted and pureed the flesh to make into soup at some future date. And that was the best thing we had to freeze it in. <laughs> it was an old toffee ice cream tub, and for a second we stared at each other in shock 
And then we burst out laughing. And so, Father Simon, I ask forgiveness not for serving my mum frozen pumpkin puree in a meringue nest with some tinned peaches. If you'd had the trifle, it wouldn't have happened. What I ask forgiveness for is the fact that even after several years, it still makes me laugh. And it's particularly consoling every time we're treated to another one of mum's little whims. I've only sent this confession in because I know mum is a devoted Radio 4 listener. (laughs) And she'll never hear it because she loves Eddie Mayer. Anyway, Alan, not my real name, still living in fear of his mum, as we can tell, because I think an awful lot of people would say, Mum, it's a trifle. It's a really nice trifle. If you don't want it, then that's fine, and I'm not going to get you a meringue nest with some tin fruit. (laughs) Anyway, I think uh, Alan is slightly scared. Let's see what Sister Bobby makes of that. It's difficult, isn't it? Because someone else could say, could I just have the jelly from that and not have the other rich bits? She didn't have to have all the sections, did she? I mean, what is it? Cream, custard, jelly. If it was too rich, just have the jelly bits. That's what she could have said. Or just say, I'll be fine with that. Just have a cup of tea. Yeah, I'll be absolutely fine. So she does seem quite difficult. It's really difficult with mums and dads because it's a privilege to be able to argue with them. That's what I think. I think if we knew Alan's (laughs) mum, we might be alongside Alan. Yeah, I'm Alan, I think. I mean, there was no, no malice. You didn't intend to do this. It wasn't like payback for her difficultness. It was a complete accident. It was. And so I'm glad you had a laugh about it afterwards because actually it seems that you showed no grudge against her and no annoyance against her and you still fed her a tea and you still found a meringue nest and you still found some strawberries in the back of the cupboard in a tin. So good on you. I think it's the only way to deal with it, Alan, because you won't always be there. So you are forgiven. See, so- sometimes you'd have a confession like this and then something is done out of spite and they deliberately spike mm. the food or something yes. like that. But that this is not what happened. It's just that because she was fussy and picky, she ended up with roasted pumpkin puree ice cream as opposed to a proper dessert. Will no one speak up for the for the mother here? No. I no. I think well I I certainly will. I mean, is this because you, your mother-in-law you, is staying with you yes, at the moment? I, I'm fabulous, and she's probably cooking right now, listening right now, and I can't wait, even though I'm on a starvey. Um, but I I think well you, you have to respect the fact that she says, uh, I'm sorry, I'm not having that trifle. It looks far too rich. Uh, make me something else, because none of us would have the nerve to say that. We would all go, oh right, I'll have some of your trifle, even though it looks not very nice. Uh, I, or we'd say, I, I won't have any dessert thanks because i don't like your trifle no she stands up and says i will have a meringue nest with some tin fruit and some ice cream and i think that i I think we should all stand up and applaud because uh, yes i do yes i do and i think uh we're that's what we all need a little bit more backbone your mother-in-law is staying and you are scared yes a little that is the Um, truth but i'm uh, very very happy with the caramel shortbreads um so uh yes forgiven not forgiven not forgiven because we're standing up Will no one speak up for the mothers? That's what I'm saying. Absolutely. (laughs)